CNN has reported that Joe Biden will be staying in the race as his family met to discuss whether top advisors should be fired. With Jill Biden quoted as saying, we all knew someone other than Joe was responsible, but after thorough investigation, we've confirmed the burden of this bad debate performance falls solely on junior debate prep staffer Naresh Singh. Jill went on to say, listen, Naresh really sh the bed and the fact that it was only his third week is no excuse but luckily we found the culprit and there is no need for a replacement candidate joe was in peak form until that saboteur naresh transcribed his debate answers to a bigger font so he could read them and whatever he did during that encounter to throw the president off his game is unforgivable when asked if joe biden's age played a role in the poor performance jill answered are you not listening i just told you it was naresh you fucked up. Hand to God, before the encounter with junior debate prep staffer Naresh Singh, Joe was reciting Pi to a thousand characters and working over a speed bag. Real piece of work that, Naresh, and if I could fire him twice, I would. Jill then went on to assure donors that now that the Naresh situation has been handled, people can start donating to the campaign again as that virus will no longer have his greasy paws on the president. Definitely a close call, but disaster has been averted and the donors can rest easy knowing Naresh has now been fired and deported. The boys, the boys cast, the lads, the boys cast, the dudes, prepare yourself for boys cast, the pros, just the boys cast, the homies, just the boys cast, the dudes, experience the boys cast, the boys cast. Now before we get started here at the boys cast people talk about inflation a lot of people have said this is a big problem in their mm -hmm. lives you know stuff has cost more danny has been my known feed prices are through the roof the feed is through the, the roof <laughs> the feed prices are out of hand man it is a problematic thing and you've been one to mention that shrinkflation is also hey i called it like three years ago i've noticed that personally yeah. i've said condoms don't fit me anymore <laughs> <laughs> i go i remember a time when i could put a magnum condom <laughs> on and nowadays yeah. it's just like this thing i'm like oh what is this for fucking for children? <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> What's I go, going on here? I go, I, this thing, I'm way too big for this thing. It's not even going to make an indent. You know, mm. I've also have had that problem before sure. now that I mentioned, but... <laughs> Now also, the underwear up, can't contain your balls. <laughs> underwear can't contain my balls. Magnum can't control the bees. Uh, However, yeah. there's an article in the New York Post. A lot of ladies have been online, and they haven't been happy campers because they said tampon shrinkflation is going viral. Our tampons getting smaller. They're putting it in there. It's just falling right out, right? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering what's going on here. The CEO of Tampax, I believe it was, said he's come out and said, it's in your mind. It's not happening. He right. released a statement saying that, ladies, your boxes have yeah, gotten they're, bigger. They're getting bigger. They're getting stretched out. Big holes, Big ladies holes. and gentlemen. They have the biggest holes. But it is hilarious that the, fa the damn facts. Dude, how do you not, if you're a woman going on there being like, Guys, these tampons are, must be getting smaller yeah, because yeah, I yeah. put it in there. <laughs> this thing is falling on the yeah, floor. Yeah, I walked to the subway and it's just gone <laughs> all of a sudden. And the tampon guy came out and he was like, no, 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 ladies. Like Larry David style, he goes, big box. Yeah. I wonder if it's also like they're not as, they're saying they're not as absorbent. Like, and then, and then, cause that got mm -hmm. my mind thinking, is there some sort of um, like factor going on? Like, you know, with maybe what's in the food or something where like the actual periods are changing and so that's you're saying what's going on. Maybe what's happening is the flow is so the goddamn is heavy. Yeah. This thing is getting way down. This is like environmental issues, like where something's happening in like <laughs> like the microplastics or something is making the chicks flow. The amount of blood that's flowing into this yeah. period, it's turning it into like a ten thousand pound sure. weight that strong men should be holding two tampons up by the string in that's, one of those well, competitions. That's what I, well, that's what I would want to know. <laughs> I would be like <laughs> That's the new strongman competition <laughs> yeah, just, They just hold up Two tampons by the string no, it's two chicks On their periods <laughs> <laughs> So there's a lot of blood Ladies and gentlemen People are Gross, saying Gross ladies But I just love That the tampons CEO, CEO had to come out And be yeah, like no no no, no 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 Well there, he said you They were hold. regulated He goes It's like the Grand Canyon In there Not yeah. what's gonna stay in there Yeah Not what a full pillow Up there would be Falling out Yeah I don't Yeah and he says They're regulated But they do have a range So maybe they like Narrowed the range I, I wonder if they could Like get rid of you know a tenth of a gram of cotton per what that saves them a you're year. on the conspiracy that the tampons have in fact cotton smaller the ceo of uh tampax begs to differ he says yeah. these hoes have big boxes and that's the Huge problem boxes <laughs> goes ladies uh, maybe delete your tinder for a week and then those I things gotta, will fit more i gotta
fucking solution. <laughs> Take a week off. Hey, close the legs, ladies. Take one week off. That's Just what he being said. Being a fucking hoe. Get, <laughs> getting beat, getting it beat up by <laughs> listeners of the boys cast. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna stretch out the yeah, best of us. Here, here's an idea. How about delete Mandingo from your contact <laughs> list and then get back to us. <laughs> Let us a, know how they're fitting now. <laughs> Take a week off of Mandingo if you don't mind. <laughs> Stop blaming us. Danny, it's trendy. Danny Bullishuk is officially back from the wedding. Yeah. The boys are back, back. together. The boys are back in town. Danny did a full 10 day excursion, which yeah. he's, was not a honeymoon, by the way. This That's is a- the. That, that was like a big thing. Is, is She kept being like, oh, you know, we go on our honeymoon. I got, this was the honeymoon. <laughs> I go, we did a honeymoon. If you're going to force me to do a second honeymoon, we can have that discussion. But stop saying this was not a honeymoon. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going back to back. <laughs> she can be like, oh, you know, for a honeymoon. I go, this was the honeymoon. <laughs> so where did that land? Is that the honeymoon or are you doing another honeymoon? Of course not. But it's just, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a negotiation, right? My wife. I, I can't just be like, yeah, I can't just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that, this was the full week in Hawaii after the wedding. That was just nothing. <laughs> Have you tried taking my wife for a spin out in public? Oh, being like, yeah. oh, the wife. Have you said the wife? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, dude, I will say, <laughs> absolutely best part of being married is when you just be like, my fucking dumbass bitch girlfriend. And you go, my dumbass bitch wife. Wife, wife hits harder, right? It's so much harder. <laughs> but it's so much better. Yeah, yeah. Wife does hit way like, harder. Like when, dude, I've already had to do it like 10 times where I'm like <laughs> waiting, like where they like an Uber and then the Uber's like, where, where is she? I go, oh, just waiting around the wife. Fucking, fucking wife, idiot. dude. <laughs> Can't fucking do anything uh the best part though was dude like it happened three different times well because you're in hawaii and people are like oh what are you doing here and i was like oh i'm getting married and there was three different guys uh one uber driver and then two guys when i was golfing one guy who's like working on the course where like you would be like oh i'm, I'm getting married and i might have just told like a combat vet that i was getting deployed you know like they were like <laughs> They like the thousand yard stare where they were like, dude, like the one guy was like, oh, just fucking give her half your house now and just make it a day. <laughs> like one guy literally said that to me. He goes, why well, dude, just save the trouble. Just give her half the house now and just, he's like, I'm telling you. And then there was another guy, like an Uber driver who was like, yeah, I've been married fucking twice. First time I got married, she cheated on me six months later. <laughs> And then I was married to another woman for 32 years, but she was an alcoholic, so I had to leave her or whatever. And he goes, I ain't never doing it again. Like, so many guys who are just like, yeah, you do you. Worst decision you could ever make, but just go ahead. Do that. <laughs> he goes, there are no weapons of mass destruction. Go ahead. She's probably sucking a dick right now. You're like, <laughs> okay, can I just get my golf club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just tee off, please? Can you just tell me, like, where the fucking... <laughs> she's fucking knee-deep in Hawaiian dick as we speak, man. You're golfing. What do you think she's doing, man? She's also playing with her holes. But it is interesting. Interesting that, like, so to some Taking people, they go, they go, that is the worst thing that you could ever do. They yeah, go, they the worst decision of my life was getting married. <laughs> like, to some guys, you tell them that, they go, your funeral, brother. Well, the guy also gave you a married, more like married. The, the other guy for, gave you the uh, first time, is what he gave yeah. you, like, first time. First time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. But we had, were, dude. We had they a- were all, like, really just like, we had this black Uber driver once, and uh, when we, I think it was on the way to your actual wedding. Yeah. And I can't remember what came up, but some, I think it's something to do with weddings or whatever. And the guy started going, he was probably like 60, right? And he launched into like a full red pill tirade. <laughs> like this guy was like, these women, some of them have been with 40, 50 men. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Corinne's fucking having Corinne's in the car, right? She's, oh, she's in the car. Johnny, were you there with it? No, oh, it was me. You know, yeah. So Corinne's, oh, Corinne's in the car. She's in the front seat, right? She's about having a conniption on this guy, right? She's the guy, guy goes, some of these women, they're with 40, 50 guys, and then they want to be turned into a wife. It's like, you made your bed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. She's a, she runs the number one slut yeah. podcast. Yeah, Corinne's like, yeah, uh, this month. <laughs> what do you mean, made my bed? I don't make my bed. <laughs> she doesn't even like tear through guys at yeah, all, but yeah, I, you no, know, no, she no. on principle, she on doesn't principle, like yeah, yeah. She's definitely like, but you should be allowed to. Because <laughs> this guy was going off, he's 60 years old. And great. it was the first half, he was normal, and then someone said something. I think I said like a joke, and it was like, we're in a oh. safe space. <laughs> the girls were fucking not feeling it. <laughs> Two guy. chicks in the car, and he's going on the red pill <laughs> ramp. This guy didn't give a shit, dude. 40, 50 women. 40, 50 guys, some of these girls. <laughs> I, he was he telling, he goes, I heard these two ladies talking in the back of the car the other day about she's dating two guys at once, and this hoe wants a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, and they're talking about this podcast they like with these whores, guys we fuck. And like, what? like, what? <laughs> she's losing her mind. That's amazing. You know what else I was thinking? We were just talking about this speech thing because it's almost like uh, 
uh, at a funeral, you know, when a comedian dies, everyone's always like, uh, it's like uh, a roast kind of, but more importantly, it was just like the sets. I was like laughing at the idea of after doing the speech, coming over to you and being like, Hey, f- sort of a fun crowd. Like guy in the back's a little chatty. My dad, you're like, you'll have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd stay off. the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, avoid certain <laughs> couple topics. Like don't talk about hey, stay Israel the- right now. <laughs> it's not really I'd stay away from Israel. <laughs> That super receptive crowd to that. So. I'd stay away from the Israel stuff. And die in the backs a little bit. I'd, I'd go a little easy on the you being fat stuff. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty sensitive crowd. <laughs> Bit of a sensitive crowd. A bunch of libs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just love the idea of da- doing yeah. the comedy thing of like, you'll have fun. It's, it's like a corporate. They do it in the corporate. Yeah, like, like, yeah, they're the back corporate. a little chatty. Like, you'll, you'll have fun, though. You'll yeah. enjoy them. <laughs> It's the comedians that talk about comedy like yeah, it's a yeah. nine, like it's a like a landscaping job. Right, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, very fun night. Uh, one thing that I will say, yeah, moving on from that because we already did a bit of a wrap up last week, but I found out and Danny's buddy, the whole family's all dentist, and this guy tells me I've been saying for years that I can't uh, f- that uh, the 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 freezing doesn't work on yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone yeah, we went golfing with uh, her cousin. My and cousin. everyone says to me, "You are a pussy," right? And that's not true. Even the doctor, the dentist, I can feel them like rolling their eyes at me, and it's like, "Hey, so you can't feel anything?" And I'm just like. It feels like a guy drilling into my mouth. Like, I just usually uh, uh, suck it up and mm-hmm. deal with it. Like, it literally feels like I'm getting drilled with no freezing. And the guy the guy always kind of, like, looks at me like, okay, we could do more freezing. And I'm like, do you think I'm lying? Like, right, do you think right, that yeah, I yeah. can't feel it and I'm saying I can? Sure. But it's like, no, it literally feels... So I've always dreaded going to the dentist because every time I get a filling, it, f- it feels like I'm in the horror movie, The Dentist, being tortured, sure. right? Sure, yeah. So this guy says, he goes, hey, d- let me ask you a question. Do you have any, like, red hair? And I'm like, I got a bit of red hair in my beard. He goes, yeah, we've everyone in the dentist community knows that for some reason freezing doesn't work on people yeah, who have like, any g- red like hair. Yeah, like gingers have, like, uh, yeah, that's what he said. He's like, ginger can sometimes like not feel the effects of anesthetic. What the fuck? Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. And he basically, like whoever invented this, I think hated gingers. So they invented a, they invented a freezing. That Big for some mouth. Re- <laughs> yeah, you go, for some reason, gingers are still going to get tortured when this works. <laughs> But anyways, I thought that was like... That is interesting. So any gingers out there who are listening? Yeah, I don't know Yeah, if you've had the same thing or anything, but it's like if you have a bit of like red hair in your family or if you have like a little couple reds in your beard. Yeah. Like I have light eyebrows, which is like a ginger thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people might say I have no eyebrows. Sure, I've heard that before. (laughs) Yes, but if you have that, apparently freezing doesn't work on you because you're like a genetic, I guess, above the rest of people. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that is. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody knows those gingers are genetically (laughs) superior. They are else. stronger. People, the master race. People, <laughs> <laughs> gingers. That's another thing about. I'll give my my sort of my whatever two percent ginger heritage, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, is people will say. You know, people always get mad at you for not putting on sunscreen. Every girl I've ever mm. been with is like, you're not putting on sunscreen. It's like, I'd have to put it on every two minutes. If you have light skin, what you realize is every summer, like a man, at the beginning of the summer, you get a real, you bad, burn. A real bad burn. You take one real bad burn a year. It peels off to yep. somewhat of a tan, and mm-hmm. then you're good for the rest of the summer. Yeah. It's happened to me every year. So I've like, every time you're with a girl, and they're always like, you're going to get burnt. You're like, yes, that's what happens. I mean, that's what no I matter do. What. That's literally what I do. I just take a bad burn. Like the, you start, take a of the bad burn. start of the trip, I just took a bad burn and i go this will be a nice tan at some point you take a bad burn and then actually back. i got an even worse burn like a week later somehow so what happened the marriage guy got gotcha? you <laughs> no i just i didn't have sunscreen i was at the pool and then that uh that it's so crazy though because like hawaii same temperature as new york right now it's just like the same, i guess that's true same weather <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm not walking around new york shirtless or whatever though no but uh I guess the sun's hotter there, though. It's for, further south. Okay, so there's two or three main things to talk about this episode. Mm-hmm. And the first one is, this is actually something Danny sent me, because they did the New York uh, Pride this week, right? So it's officially, I guess, Pride Month. It's every over. Pride, yeah. It's every pride. No, but they do them at different times, the parades. The parades, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they do it that way, so people anybody can go to all of them. The, yeah, like, do people tour them like fish? <laughs> yeah. Where you just hit up, every, you're in the lot of every Pride parade? Just. I mean, it is probably, like, if you are a dude that's gay, you just probably go Pride to Pride, like, oh, that smack. You're fucking exhausted and you probably like never sleep. Well, you're walking funny. <laughs> well, you probably just never sleep. You're just like doing drugs and. What is fun? I mean, it is always funny to note 
like the extent to which gay guys and lesbians are what it looks like when you leave guys to their own devices and the girls to their own devices. Right. And the, obviously the positive part is, first of all, you go, what's uh, big in the gay pride, in the gay community? It's like, they're all jacked. Uh -huh. Like uh, most of them care about working up and yep. stuff. Obviously, since the progressive era, there's been a little bit of like the fat gay guys trying to be like, oh, there's actually nothing wrong with me. Uh, for the most the bears, part. The bears. But if you ever talk to gay guys, they're like, yeah, I mean, we'd obviously prefer the of in course. shape guy. You know sure. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what happens in the, the gay community is they all get super jacked and they're getting blown nonstop. What happens in the lesbian community? They let themselves go. Overalls. They let themselves go. Collection. And then also no sex. They all yes. cuddle and stuff yeah, like that. Just, yeah. I don't even think they cuddle. They're I think kind of live together. Well, if you think cohabitate. Of, if you think about like what gay spaces are, they're always like, oh yeah. Also, if you go past that door, there's like a glory hall. Right. Yeah. yeah of course. And lesbian spaces, you're like, if you go past that door, like we have like a, a knitting area yeah. and <laughs> the complaining, crafts, the, the crafts, crafts and complaining. There's a bunch of tools. <laughs> I don't I, I, tools to I don't use. really think it's totally fair to say that the lesbians are like complaining because actually I mean there's the like online bisexual complainers yeah, yeah, but like in real life like the cool like a lot of lesbians are sort of like dudes. yeah that is true they're yeah, actually yeah, yeah. not that complaining that is true yeah but they don't have as much sex that's the, the no. probably the main thing and they are probably not in I mean, like, shape your, like your joke they have zero sex yeah, that was my joke. Zero sex is your opinion for sex, but the fetish zone Danny to explain to the people so what San you Francisco me. pride <laughs> Had uh, like an adults like fetish area, so it's like I will at least say for like it wasn't like a kid access area, but they had like the adult fetish area, and you know it used to be like, hey, we're gonna like walk this guy on a leash. There was <laughs> a legitimately a kiddie pool with a guy in it, and it was a piss pool, and you could just the guy was just like laying in the pool, and then people could come and just piss on him. He was just there to get pissed on, and it was hot outside. Like, dude, a hot piss. <laughs> Like a fucking like San Francisco July piss, dude. Like you know what New York smells like right now. It just smells like like when heat and piss mix, like that smell. And then the guy's just laying in the pool. Let me ask you a question: Would you have taken a him. squirt? Taking a piss on him? Like, <laughs> like you, God dude, how funny would that be, though? Like, if a bunch of people that are, like, homophobic went through? Yeah. And they were just like, <laughs> fucking yeah, queer. <laughs> 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 like, and then the guy's just like, this is wrong, but it's so hot. <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of bullies come by and just fucking unload one on him. Or like it's just a fucking, you know, San Francisco, some homeless guy just like wanders in and he goes, yo, there's a guy shitting in the piss pool. That's just for piss, man. And he goes, I don't know. I thought it was a toilet. <laughs> the piss pool is something else. <laughs> but then there was a piss pool and then there was another, I don't know if you saw the other video because it kept going around and it is so funny because obviously like conservatives are like the most opposed to this, but then they're also the only ones who are posting a video of an old guy <laughs> yeah, getting blown while, while getting pissed on. <laughs> I'm like, there are no fucking liberal people are like, yo, here's a video that you have to watch while you're at the airport of an old man getting blown while getting pissed on. Every conservative I follow is just like, here's a fucking video of an old guy getting blown while getting pissed can on. Can you believe this? Yeah, can you believe this? I'm like, well... You can talk about it without saying it, but you, yeah. it probably doesn't have the effect. You know, I've always yeah, thought know. that with people... I've, I kind of was trying to do a joke about this, but it always made me laugh. The people... You know, the oldest thing in the book was the guy that had the swastika, but it was crossed out. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, it's all... It's, it's always uh, in order to call other people racist you need to like say the racist thing like you need to be like just so you know black guys this guy's racist he says you steal right like, you need yeah, to yeah, say, of course, of you course. need to like put it into the ether mm -hmm. and it always reminded me of like going up to someone at your work and you're just like just so you know like everyone's talking shit about you Dan says that your wife's gonna leave you and she's cheating on yeah, you yeah, you're yeah, like, like well now you're saying <laughs> it yeah now you're saying it sure <laughs> But anyways, I don't know. You think they would be the ones who were like, they could just describe the video. I guess Twitter's just like, yeah, you just retweeted it or whatever. But I'm like, the amount of times that just... Do you think that guy tells people and you're like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm an activist. I'm like an family <laughs> guy cut to him just getting pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's like I mean, people make a good point. Where like the pride thing is, you're like, what? What are you pr proud about with this? There's one thing to be like, yeah, gay, moving the Ovalton window, I guess. But like, g gay people, yes, they were treated very badly, and then there was like every action has some sort of reaction, which is like what you're seeing. But then now we're going so far where you're like, yeah, there's a, a, a piss fetish area. Like this isn't you on a 
<laughs> float. This isn't like the Stonewall Inn being like, stop arresting us for being gay. Raising awareness. <laughs> yeah, you're not raising awareness. You're not like protesting anything. Like you don't have, like there's no rights gay people don't have anymore. Do you think that other groups, activist groups should d do this same sort of thing? Like where you go, hey, I want you to support the veterans and they all fucking take their dicks out <laughs> for <laughs> around? Yeah, my, my um, <laughs> best friend died in a helicopter crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like you know, the veterans all just like getting pissed on and stuff like this. You're but like, I guess, How does this help? I guess it's really hard in the gay community to like dissent to be like, hey guys, like well, everyone's no petrified of them. That's what I'm saying. Like, hey guys, like no, piss, you're gonna be the old no fuddy duddy. <laughs> Well, any any sort of dissent from like where it's going is like if you were if you were saying like, hey, I thought last year was enough. It's like, oh, Mister, like nineteen forties Ronald right. Reagan yeah, yeah, over yeah, here, yeah. fucking prude. You go now. <laughs> it's like there's like I mean probably there is gonna be like a scat pool in three years where you're just like <laughs> sure. some dude's just like shit on me and just covered in shit, <laughs> just Ginger, rubbing yeah. himself like he's at like the fucking Dead Sea, <laughs> just covering his fucking whole body and shit. <laughs> Oh uh, shit! Yeah, disgusting. <laughs> there was a bit of a Palestine dust up. At oh the New yeah, York that was one. another thing too. They canceled Toronto Pride. Actually, stop they, it. They canceled the end of it. Yeah, the march because the the like twenty pro Palestine people showed up, and then they go, we're canceling the the rest of the parade. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Toronto Pride got canceled for the rest of the day. Toronto is such a bunch of cocks. I know, but they basically, because they, I guess they go like the, that's the hierarchy, right? Is like because they always yeah. find a way to someone there. There's a new hierarchy, and someone's always on the top like canada they go like two spirit and like you know it used to just be lgbt someone's on the bottom and then someone's was, also in the piss pool. Well, it was lgbt and then trans literally were at the end <laughs> and now they kind of got to the front and then there was like two spirit and then now it's like the palestine people are like the pro-palestine they've somehow managed to be like we're the they're the, well, they're most the righteous you are yeah but they're also we're the most righteous of mm. all of you so therefore we're at the well, top well it's hard to argue that it is hard to argue with them when they're like hey our issue is more important we think all these kids are getting killed and mm. the guy's sitting there gargling piss being like <laughs> 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 we're like <laughs> well yes I am <laughs> you're saying that your issue is more important than mine huh <laughs> yeah huh got your own pride <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, dude, I was at Brooklyn Comedy Club, Williamsburg Comedy Club, and I watched. Uh, it was pretty funny. I, th I think it was like the day of Pride, and it was a guy. This guy looked like Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, you know, earthquake and typhoon. This was a big boy, straight up, just like high heels and a lace dress, no changes to his face, no. short hair, yeah. <laughs> like straight up. He was at the show, or he's guy, guy looked like like. Maybe you, if you put on like 40 pounds, didn't shave your beard, yeah. made zero changes, sure. popped on high heels and like a lace dress, like as if you were doing like a bit. Fully lace? Like like mesh? No, I, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but like basically like yeah, strap. Yeah, like, like a sundress. Yeah, like a sundress. <laughs> this guy was walking with two girls, like they were, you know, he was yeah, like yeah. leader of the pack. Okay. And they were just in his wig. He was like, I love the like zero effort. Yeah, the zero effort. Uh, was he, do you think he was trans or just gay? Like, was he just doing it up for the gay pride? <laughs> no, I think this, it's hard to say. I yeah. think once you put the he heels on, you're like, I guess that's you're the thing trans. is like, that's the one thing you really see in New York a lot. I'm sure you'd like maybe San Francisco, LA, or whatever, but you don't really see it outside of like three or four cities. Is just like a regular dude walking around in a dress. Like, yeah, usually the fully, guy says he's like, trans. Yeah. yeah, they'll say he's trans. Here, it's just like you go on the train and like there's just like a dude beard like but fatter is, it's funnier because the guy was so fat I, that's why it was making me laugh <laughs> <laughs> you know what i was kind of thinking is the what's your freak flag like the for? trans thing i said i always get made foods i've told you about this but i'll get foods and then at the end of it it'll be like oh just so you know that was like a uh, like a vegan like meat or whatever right uh -huh. and i was just saying it's funny to be like what the fuck <laughs> like that's what it's like. That that's the same feeling as you just found out that uh, you had sex with someone that used to be a guy. Yeah, yeah. like you just go, you know what I mean. You're like, what the fuck did you just make me put in my mouth? You go, you know that used to be a dick, and you're like, what the what is the fucking? I you're mean, telling me this wasn't an animal? Like you know it was a plant. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the Ace Ventura in the in the shower. It's the Ace Ventura in the shower. That's when I find out. Plunging that I, your face. <laughs> that's me finding out that I ate a vegan hot dog. <laughs> Uh, you made me fucking uh, You're a vegan all yeah, I mean You should be told Can't So Sneak that in
So they uh, have run some articles about how vodka soda has become the gay water. So apparently, this is a PSA at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. That if you're, uh, do you think that there's any like people that run vodka brands that sell a lot at bars and there's just like 40 articles coming out right now being like vodka soda is the gay water and you're just like, please stop. You're, like, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Uh, well, you're I know, killing Bud, us. Bud Light's just like, whoo, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Some people call that gay water. Yeah, Bud, Bud Light's like, can we promote articles that aren't ours? Like, can we, like, can we put a true. million dollars behind promoting these articles on yeah. Instagram? But CNBC ran this, which is hilarious. They're running it. But like all these places have been running this article, apparently. Sure, being like... But yeah, it's hilarious because if you were like Stoli, which by the way, I was the spokesperson for for a bit. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you were Stoli, uh, you're just like, please stop this. Yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure. We, we would like to just be regular vodka. We don't want to be gay vodka. But I guess it is true where it's like the gay guys all drink the vodka sodas because they like to be skinny. They used to call vodka Diet Coke. I remember that was a skinny bitch. They used to call that in yeah. shot of the girls in the scene. Yeah, it's a diet drink for sure. I think the probably what's the most manly drink? Whiskey on the rocks? Something like that, yeah. So uh, I've been definitely a, bra a brown lately. liquor. Seltzers became a girl drink, but that was like the whole thing with like the full send one and yeah. high noons, happy dad. They're kind of like we're gonna be a seltzer that's not like for a girl for, drink for the bros. A girl drink for the bros, but it's well, they don't describe it as a girl drink for the bros. They describe it as a drink. I guess for the girl bros. drink used to be like a Cosmo, like you get like a pink thing in a martini glass. Like well, any like anytime that. you're getting uh, margarita, like anytime you're getting like mixed drinks, period, like margaritas, the sugary yeah. drinks are all for girls. Yeah, I think an old fashioned is sort of still kind of. Yeah, you don't dude. see chicks drink that ever. No. I've never seen a chick drink it all. But it's officially the vodka soda is the gay water, so that is uh, the case. All right. Can you order gay water, like, if at a bar and they'll know what you want? I think I think if you go to a gay bar, they know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The guys at the gay bars were saying, like, oh, yeah, if you're a bartender at the gay bar, you just make a bunch of vodka sodas and you already know that that's right, what they're going to get. Right, because that's just like what people want. Well, they're trying to stay fit. And they're also trying not to get those sugary things because I think they probably don't want, like, the runs. <laughs> well, they were, yeah, right, right, right. I mean, I, I think I talked about it before, but you ever see on, like, <laughs> where, where people will post their like bottom like it'll be like a diet a gay dietitian mm. and they'll be like here's like bottom friendly like foods <laughs> like literally be like i'm a dietitian here are all the best bottom friendly foods really so which ones have you been doing uh <laughs> see i like to go the opposite way i'm a bit of a contrarian so I'm <laughs> mostly just taco bell and <laughs> I like I like a little surprise in the bedroom, you know. But <laughs> and then you have, right before they start, you go ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, they're like they're like literally they'll be like here's like a whole bottom friendly like diet if you're a, <laughs> if you're a buy at a bottom you actually have to like yeah there's certain foods that are just bad to eat. I guess you don't eat milk. I, I don't know. I can't remember what they are, but there was like all these things where like certain like greens. You go, this is bad for your greens. There'll be like certain ones. We'll be like this one will cause you know like some you know gut problems or something and mm. I, I guess it's all like potential issues well, that guess. stinks yeah no pun intended there pal. <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully if you eat the bottom friendly foods it doesn't stink so. there was another on the last uh the last of that there was a girl i saw on tiktok and she has a whole thing because i've been saying that uh a lot of times women that have like kinks they can't just be like i'm weird they have to be like it's not it's normal sure but we were talking before about how there was a guy that uh the woman saying she tests the sex toys and if it was a guy testing sex toys he would just be like it works you know? <laughs> yeah but there was a girl she has this whole thing that she was attracted to cartoons and she has a whole name for it she says pictorial attracted she's got like this big channel but it's funny because you're just like the amount of guys that are probably jerked off to a cartoon oh. <laughs> you know i mean it's like all the hentai <laughs> shit it's like yeah 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 those are the weirdest of all the guys. Like when you see like cartoon porn, <laughs> and you're like, "Who the fuck's watching this?" Well, the, like there's 20 a twenty million views. The problem is, I think the dudes that are just like like jacking off to cartoons. I think the real problem comes in is because there's a crossover for guys that like to jerk off to cartoons because then they're pedophiles. You know what I right, mean? Yeah. They're like, "Well, yeah, I jerk off to cartoons because they they make yeah yeah they make like yeah yeah for sure." You know what I mean? Yeah, they'll make like cartoons Fucking freaks. It, it, it's a bit weird, yeah. Especially once you know what I mean. You're like yeah. an adult. And there's just like you're on a porn site and there's like unlimited everything and then you're still choosing. Cartoons. Right. So there's a there's probably 12 times more guys that are like, I'm into that, but you'll like, never find like my identity where this girl's got her face front facing camera being like attracted to cartoons and there's nothing wrong with that. Every guy was just be like every there's a million guys that are probably jacking off to Rick and Morty that you'll never they Ugh. they die with that information. Yeah, of course. Like it's not like the early 90s where it was like, you know, there's a hot cartoon you go. This will have to do for right now. There's not a lot of options, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was that Brad Pitt movie? Remember where there was like it was like the half cartoon? Remember that? Uh, yeah, Roger Rabbit. 
Was it Roger Rabbit? Yeah, I think it was. Ro- no, I don't know if it was Roger Rabbit, but there was also Roger Rabbit. But it was also Roger something Rabbit. like that. They, that was a big format for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But they're like, we're gonna Space super, Jam was that? Too? Yeah, superimposed cartoons with people or whatever. And then you go, yeah, I'll rub one. Babs up. Bunny. Babs Bunny. <laughs> you go, yeah, this will do. <laughs> He'll have to do. He'll have to do. There's not a lot of options. But you also take that to the grave. You don't. But I think what happens is they can't. Yeah, be, you don't make it your identity. They don't like having fair. shame, right? So they finish, and where's the guy goes? Ah, that was bad news. The girl <laughs> finishes and being like, it actually wasn't bad news. <laughs> Why do I feel this way? I shouldn't. Yeah, I should. <laughs> and it's everyone else's fault. I'm going to make a TikTok. <laughs> well, there's also good news. The RCMP is surprised that hate groups are increasingly racially diverse. Oh. So they've been having a little bit of a, a problem when they well, found. <laughs> yeah, they're having a problem with them being wrong. So they're like. <laughs> How do we make this right? How do we justify all of our nonsense? They hate that, man. Finding out that they're just like fucking with... They're like, we want to talk shit about this group and call them white supremacists. Mm-hmm. And then they show the name and it was just like Mohammed Patel. Yeah, and a lot of like, Sings Rrr. and Patels in the group. And you go, hmm. <laughs> That's doing a number on them. They're not well, happy they, campers. They, yeah, they don't know how to... Well, it's so much easier when you can just lump a group by race. And then, it uh, is progress, though. We have to admit yeah. that when you have... Live in a society that you have the KKK and it's just a bunch of Indian dudes. You know, they have... <laughs> <laughs> serving curry sure. at the KKK yep. cookout. That is fine. Leave Reese's progress to its full amount. Hey, I mean, there's nothing nothing wrong with it. And they're blaming. They're like, oh, it's populism. You're like, no, everybody just hates your thing. Everyone it's like, hates Why you can't guys. you just understand that? People are like <laughs> against what you're doing and so they're like they're organizing like there's all these like it's it's attracting so many different groups and you're like well how do we call it it's like yeah they hate you they hate your shit yeah they hate your shit but they're not a hate group no exactly they're not organizing and fucking lynching people well they always talk about uh, well actually i just think it is funny also that like my family is so diverse that like if you literally saw my family photos it's one of those things where if you were like a super conservative guy you'd be like disney's at it again yeah yeah. and you'd be like no that is actually what they look like you know what i mean yeah Oh, we got a banger of a sponsor here Mm -hmm. to tell you about. This is Joy Mode. If you do not know about Joy Mode, this is a sexual performance booster, but it not only does that. That's why this one's actually cool. So not only is the supplement you need for the bedroom, it also supports your blood vessels, cardiovascular health, athletic performance, blood pressure, and more. Help you making lots of gains, (laughs) if you know what I mean. That's right. You want to be stiff. You want want to be stiff. You want to be hard. You want to be out here. You don't want to be at the gas station at fucking two in the morning. Excuse me, sir. Do you have no, no, no? Uh, what do those things do? Buying some BS well, like some a loser. Just waiting in your car. And she's she's, like, oh, <laughs> she's waiting in your car, losing interest. Let's call out the obvious. Everyone wants to head into the bedroom with confidence, feeling like the best version of themselves. But the problem is sometimes our thoughts get in the way of our performance, or maybe we feel like we're just not reaching our full performance. We've all been there, mm-hmm. folks. What are your options? You're at a gas station like some chump? Or you can come in with our friends over at Joy Mode. This is something to try because there is one thing. I think that's a pretty good point that you're like, okay, I'm doing a sexual, uh, you're doing like a pill for sex, but you're like, but also it's good for all this other stuff too. Yeah, of course. Come on. Imagine a supplement you can take like your favorite greens packet that gives you extra dose of confidence, saves you the embarrassment and hassle of a traditional erection pill. You just get it here. You're not going to the doctor. You're not doing anything. It comes in a palm-sized packet like your favorite electrolyte powder. You stir it in six to eight ounces of water, 40 45 minutes before you're going to town, Mm -hmm. sexual activity, and watch Mm -hmm. the magic unfold. This allows our cardiovascular system to pump blood more seamlessly and effectively to areas of your body that need it, whether during workouts, sexual activity, or on your regular daily excursions. So when combined with a healthy diet, good sleep and exercise, this is greatly going to improve your cardiovascular health and also, most importantly, make you... Just a beast in the beast bedroom, eh? And the gym. And, yeah, you, exactly. You're, what do you, where else do you want to be a beast? You want to be the beast in the bedroom in the gym. You know what I mean? Correct. When combined with daily health. Like I said, the most important thing that I like about Joy Mode is that it's double in your doll. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're hitting two birds here. Killing two birds. <laughs> you're making one bird work better. <laughs> making one bird walk funny. You're making one bird walk. No, I was saying your bird. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess you're, she's a bird, too. She's you're right. Bird, okay, yeah. so it's your bird's walking, buddy. You're also... Killing one. Those yeah, are the two yeah. birds you're killing. You're juicing one bird. You're juicing one bird. Walk you're juicing funny. one bird. You're making one bird walk funny, and then you're also good in the gym. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if there's a bird analogy yeah. for the gym situation. <laughs> So, okay, if you want to give it a try, they're game changers. Small enough to fit in your wallet, take on the go, perfect travel companion. Go to usejoymode.com, get 20% off with the code BOYSCAST at checkout. That is 20% off and free shipping with the code BOYSCAST at usejoymode.com. 
joymode.com. Use joymode.com. Great sex solved naturally. And fellas, I have officially switched over to Mando, and you should too. So I'm telling you here about Mando. Sometimes you don't want to, you know, you're not sure if you could bring 15,000 things. When you're going on a trip, when I was going to Hawaii, for Mm -hmm. example, maybe your suitcase exceeds the weights. So when you're talking hygiene products, do I bring a tiny shampoo, face wash, and that's where you can simplify your travel, but also in any other parts of your life with Mando's 4-in-1 Acidified Cleansing Bar. And I think some of the people have already tried if you're not yet, Mando, you're going to switch over. You're going to be there for life. You can also use it to create a rich shaving lather. So technically, it's a five-in-one. Mm. Clinically proven to control odor for 24 hours, Mando's four-in-one acidified cleansing bar is formulated with a gentle alpha hydroxy acid that stops odor at the source. A regular soap can't do the trick because the pH is too high. So this simplifies your hygiene routine. It's the only thing you need to pack. So uh, people... This is a special offer offer for new customers. Get $5 off Mando's best-selling starter pack with the code BOYSCAST at shopmando.com. The whole body deodorant. Mando is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, packages, butt cracks, belly buttons, crevices, stomach folds, your feet. And they've actually done a study where most guys don't wash their feet enough. No. (laughs) They always talk about that. Bathhouse listeners know that I they, do not. Yeah, they always talk about that. That's why Mando's problem solved, man. You just get that. It's like a, I put that stuff everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. So Mando's whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere, allowing you to put Mando on the family jewels without any worry because Mando's aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, dye free, and vegan. So Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And luckily at the Boys Cast, we got this discount code to get you hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off the starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. And you can use the code BOYSCAST at shopmando.com. S H O P M A N D O dot com. <laughs> they did another thing. Tom Hanks' uh, son, who we know, Chet Hanks. Chet. He actually, uh, a friend of the videos. He's always, sure. He kind of reposts a few videos and likes stuff every yeah, now and then. I, like, I, I like want to try to get him on the podcast. But they basically, uh, I think this was, fuck, I forgot to write who, down who did this, but it was, I think, in New York Times or something. One of these like big uh, publications. I think 90% sure it was New York Times. Said, the Lie in New York Times. Lie in New York Times said how Tom Hanks' son spawned a hateful meme online. And because people were like in uh, Telegram. Graham and stuff using uh, White, White Boy Summer, Summer yeah, a little yeah. bit. They're kind of having a big breakdown to the point where he recently had to respond to it being like, you know, I don't condone uh, using White Boy Summer as a... Tom Hanks said this or Chet Hanks? Chet Hanks. Oh, okay. Tom Hanks hasn't uh, weighed, in, he hasn't on weighed in on the topic. <laughs> the White Boy Summer. <laughs> When Chet Hanks first used the phrase white boy summer, it seemed to be done ironically. Now, has been appropriated around the world by white supremacists and other hate yeah. groups. But the f- oh, big example they have is Jack Posobiec, who's like, a, he guy was like in, like, he's like at the debate with Trump or whatever. Like, yeah, he yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, he's like a big right wing guy. Yeah. But he's like a conservative. Yeah, right? he's a conservative, yeah. Yeah, so they're saying that he's like the right wing guy, right? When they say it's a white supremacist, that's who they mean, like guys oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Where you're like people that are like, I guess, prominent conservatives. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. A podcaster from the Southern Poverty Law a podcaster whom the Southern Poverty Law Center is linked to white supremacists waved a banner with the words white boy summer on it at a gathering for Turning Point USA. So Turning Point USA, like again, whether you like them or not, they're like a pretty standard conservative. Sure. Yeah, they're just like a very conservative group. A conservative group in Detroit last week at Donald J. Trump's conference. So they're like, you know, it's white supremacist. And then they're like, well, what does that mean? It's like basically Trump again. Trump again, yeah. I always, I was kind of thinking a funny thing that one of the reasons why, because I was watching some of the like old debate clips and stuff like that. And it's, well, just not uh, just because everyone's posting stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're supposing like how Biden sounded 10 years ago. Exactly. Very different. (laughs) He sounded different four years ago. Four years ago. But they basically. it was kind of making me laugh the you know Trump sort of took over the Republican party and i was saying one of the reasons is because forever 
the Democrats slogans were all kind of repurposed Republican slogans. Like a lot of times it's like we say, you know, Black Lives Matter is like we'll go with All Lives Matter or something. So when Trump came with new slogans, it Mm -hmm. like blew their mind. Yeah. When he came with like build the wall with new content, Uh there hadn't been like a Republican guy that had like new content in a while, especially that stuck. He got them on the hook by saying make America great again, which was something familiar. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the Reagan one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then he started hitting them with lock them up, build the wall, new nicknames. They weren't, I feel like Republican Party for years hadn't been accustomed to new content. No, they just always rolled out the same kind of clone of the last guy for the most part. Yeah, or the opposite of the Democrat one. Kind of, but it was always like you had a real like very super, it was always like super polished guy and they always just said this. Well, it's because it's like, you know, and they're saying the whole thing with Biden where they're like the party is bigger than the the guy, right? Mm -hmm. They go, it's more important that the party wins versus the guy wins, which is why they're like, going to thinking about removing him even though biden just said he goes i ain't going anywhere that's the new news yeah that just happened right now he goes i'm not going anywhere now again (laughs) and we've talked about we me and we and jj kind of said our thoughts right after it but now we've had time to see the like reaction from everyone yeah which is more usually what we comment on the reaction of what happens sure and i mean a lot of people are saying and it makes sense where because you know they're like they brought in hunter biden like everyone's saying now like hunter biden is like at the white house and he's top tier advisor but he's basically advising his dad like you know you can't give in you cannot drop out and you're like yeah because like you know his business is is oh, access and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to the president and you're you know like, what yeah. that is it's also like a reverse uh action movie mm-hmm. he's like it, basically he was he they're kind of like normally the guy's like i'm getting too old for this shit biden's there like in a rocking chair being like i'm not getting too old for this shit <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it's a reverse action yeah, movie yeah, basically but uh they're just they want to keep their influence they're like influence peddlers and who wants to give again you see it in every dick dictatorship ever not saying that that's what this is but like who wants to give up that power and what you just go back to being like a lot of things fall apart because a lot of things hinge on these contracts you know what i mean you could be a guy that you know you're just like i just got this big construction contract coming up through some bullshit that they're hawking and i'm about to clean 20 million like i need this to happen or imagine you're one of the chumps who bought hunter biden's artwork for fucking five hundred thousand <laughs> or a million dollars a pop for his fucking finger paintings and the reason why you buy them is because you're like hey i'm doing you a solid here man and i'm gonna cash this in at some point right now you've got yeah now you've got a finger painting by like george bush's nephew also it's crazy like that because if they admit they go so we're kind of like all just admitting they're like okay so joe biden's like mentally not there but he's still the president i thought that a lot because like, people dude, are always like i thought your that doctor so or like dude imagine your car mechanic is like hey so you bring your car in and they're like yeah this guy's like fucking cooked and you go can we get someone else to work on the car then if he's not capable you go no like we have him for another four months yeah, so yeah, yeah he yeah, has yeah, to work yeah. on your car and you're like i prefer not <laughs> no i mean it really is like you working at like a hedge fund and then you go in and then they're like you apply for a promotion there's like there's no way this guy's to fit for working here and you're like well he does work here yeah and he's working on my thing <laughs> he does currently work <laughs> yeah, he here. does currently work here <laughs> And he's locked in for another, like, whatever, four months. You're like, but is can he do it? You go, it doesn't matter. He's here. <laughs> I, yeah, they, matter. They're, they're, everyone's like, this guy can't be the president. You're like, well, he well, is. He is right now. He's know, currently that's the president. a funny one. Yeah. Okay, what about this, Danny? Uh, this is a parody song that, that you... That I'm going to give this idea to you. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> you have to make a music video. Okay. Okay. So it's a video called Panic at the White House. Yeah. And then you, the lyrics, so you can sing it however you want. But Joe Chimes. <laughs> it's called, so your band's called Panic at the White House. Panic at the White House. And you go, Joe Chimes in with a sentence you never heard of. What's the song? Being so goddamn old. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joe Chimes in with the haven't you people ever heard of. I'm going to have to get the lip ring. You get the lip ring. I'm going to have to get the lip ring. For the so song. this is Danny's new band, Panic at the White House. I mean, it's no Are panic. you interested in that? Um, uh, I'm good. I think it's funny if you do it. Maybe I get a lot of mascara. You wear all the mascara, and you call the band "Panic at the White House." <laughs> I mean, apparently they're not panicking. That's the whole thing. Is like I told you, I was watching CNN last night just yeah, to see you what were. they're saying, and all of CNN right now is like he's not fit. They're bring, now they're starting to bring in all these like people, and the governors, and they're like he needs to step down. Like he's he's you know it's not good for the party. The party's going to lose. We have a better chance if 
I guess they're saying it would be like Kamala Harris, though, which I don't think they would have a better chance. Oh, God. They're, they're doing the, uh, the uh, uh, what was that movie with Jonah Hill and Leonardo DiCaprio, Wolf of Wall Street? Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're kind of, that's how they're like acting is they're like, we'll have a better chance. But the problem is, is she's done so little. Like, it's not like she was, you know, forefront for the whole time. And you go, yeah, that seems like she could do a good job. You're like, you haven't heard from her in three and a half years. Yeah. Like, you see her, like, once every six months. Now you're seeing her a little more. But she you, has been around lately. Yeah, well, the video. We have a funny video of insane. her. There's been a couple funny videos of her. But, Kamala like, now Harris. they're, I guess, trotting her out to maybe get the temperature of, like, what people think of if she's electable or you not. You know what? It's funny. I didn't even put that together, man. I'm so, like, prone to be psyoped, I guess. Because, like, legitimately, I have. I've seen like 20 videos in a row of her and it didn't even cross my mind that that's the obvious thing that's happening. They're getting her out in the mix to see what the public yeah, reaction is. I, I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. didn't even of. cross my mind that why like, I've seen her so they, much They lately. weren't even letting her cut ribbons. <laughs> like, at least let her cut some ribbons and stuff. A new, fucking a new dam or some shit. They're like, you don't see her at all. Yeah, they got And then me. now all of a sudden they're like, I guess we gotta... Because I don't know if this is true, but I saw... Because she's from California and I saw... And I don't know if this is true, so... California if Harris. If I'm wrong, but I guess you can't have like two candidates from the same state. So, because everybody's like Gavin Newsom or whatever, but I guess technically she would have to be the candidate. And so they couldn't run oh. Gavin Newsom because uh, unless she won't run. I guess okay. I, I don't know. The, but, anyways, so, but that's what it sounds like is they're like, if it's not him, it's her. And I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. But now he says he's not going. Well, I run. felt like his family and, you know, Obama and all those people that are like, trust me, the guy's the man or whatever. Yeah. And I have a couple articles, but it kind of reminds me of like a guy that's like backing up his friends to his chick. And you're like, you know, he's like, a, you know, this guy's a piece of shit, but you're like, he's the fucking man. Right. And then he comes to like the wedding and he just like does coke all night and causes a scene. And then after Words, you'd be like, okay, obviously he's not the best. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we're friends. You know, we've been friends forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But before back. that, you're kind of like, I'm telling you, he's the goat. Like, you should be like, I don't want you hanging out with him. You're like, he's the best. Right. Like, blah, blah. And then afterwards, it's like, okay, obviously he's not the best. But <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Maybe he does with that, what with that uh, Supreme Court ruling the other day. Because, you know, they just pushed the Trump was supposed to be sentenced in a week from today. I know. And now it's not. It's got pushed to September because of that Supreme Court ruling. People weren't happy about that. Well, they're not happy about it because they essentially just gives the president like powers of a king. But then I guess technically Biden has those powers now. Exactly. So maybe he could go do some fucked up shit. Well, I think the fucked up shit that he should do is start releasing. If they're if they're serious about keeping him going, they should be have him up at four a.m. Yeah, doing like the rock style workout videos, Ooh, yeah. being like no days off. You know, I always got to get it in. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could be the body that you want to be. Sure. Plastic surgery, awesome. full on. I mean, they made him With orange. The, I. <laughs> They literally gave him the fucking Trump spray tan. That's so funny because he looked so shitty in that debate. And they go, how do we make him look a little more youthful? And they're like, yeah, the thing that Trump's been doing for 20 it years. It is funny that the orange was off the table for him before. Because yeah. like, they were probably like, this is a good solution. You give them the orange. Yeah. But they can't. Because <laughs> you, go, That'll be weird. you can't give him the orange. And now, the, dude, they're like so fucking short on ideas where they're like... <laughs> We got to make him orange. I'm telling you, man, he comes out the next debate. He's got like the full lips and everything. You know, <laughs> just filler lips. He's got, he's got filler in the lips. He's got like the full like cheek filler, you know, face mask. that looks yeah. like he just got scared by a ghost. <laughs> Just the whole deal. He comes out and he's just like no days off. He's doing just every trick in the book, right? You're throwing it at the wall, see what works. I guess the funny thing too is they like after the debate, everybody's like, "Oh, he looked like shit." And then a couple like Obama came out, and you're like, "Yeah, you know, I had bad debates too." Like it's just a, it was just a, like they were trying to. That's why I said that's so what everyone was saying. He stepped down. Debate. It was like, well, why would Obama and all these people be bending over backwards to be like he's the guy? Because Obama's was. currently the president. Woo! That's why. Because no, but I'm saying if the guy was stepping down, was my point. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But I'm saying Obama's saying like, hey, he's fine. He just had a bad debate. But that's my point is yeah, he yeah, wouldn't yeah. be doing that. They're right. not just like acting on their own accord. They're a fucking unit. But then now they're like some of one of the they're trying to the story that they're trying to spin or whatever is he goes he was just like he was traveling so much. They go he, you know he's been traveling all over the world. He's just tired. Like you just caught him when he was tired. And you're like this is like the biggest debate. In you know for him yeah you take several, a day off then yeah, yeah just like maybe <laughs> just take one day off so you're rested 
Oh, exactly. So that obviously that was bullshit. Everyone yeah. can see. I mean, nobody believes eyes. that. But you know what? Some Democrat people were like, kind of like, oh, that was bad. And then you know, some people just need some slop served to them, and they go, mmm, good slop. That was good slop. <laughs> oh, yummy. People are waiting for the slop to get right. Served. So they go, hey, you ever travel before? Think how tired you are when you traveled. He was just traveling a lot. And they're like, okay, I didn't yeah, show that. Oh, that tastes good. <laughs> mm, I mean, mm. it's possible. Oh, lots of travel. Yummy. <laughs> mm, mm, I was tired. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> Four more years. Mmm, that tastes nice. <laughs> it's basically, like, he's just tired. You're like, okay, well, you, you, at some point, you know, that doesn't get to be an excuse for the president. You're like, you're not fucking some, like, work at some company. You're not an accountant where you go ahead and really burn in the midnight oil. That's what there, everyone right? said. If this was like a CEO press conference, the stock would have dropped 50%. I mean, it did. If you were watching the betting markets or whatever, like, he, yeah, exactly. he, he did tank in the betting markets. Like, it dropped, like, 15 cents or something. I'm telling you, he's got to go for the eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what's funny? Maybe this is why it's on my mind. But I saw, I, I always see these videos of the girls with like the face and the eyelash and stuff like that. Yeah. And like the full look, you know, when they're probably, probably girls that are like 30, but they're like real souped up with all the stuff. And mm -hmm. I look at every comment and it's like, you look like a man, this and that. And I'm like, I literally thought that was hot. Yeah. Like, it, I, I, I'm the slop with the hey with girls putting fake stuff on, like yeah. girls who get the lips and everything. I'm the guy eating the slop with that. Sure. I, go, I mean, obviously, I some guys a ten right there. <laughs> some guys like. I mean, surely no, some guys like it. They wouldn't do it if no guys liked it. Well, I guess you're. It is like somewhat sexual or something. Yeah, like, you for know, sure. The, the, it's all the sexual. It's like bigger lips and all. It does stuff. it for me, man. I mean, it's generally all just. It works on the youth, kid. Youthfulness, I guess. I sort of hate that I'm that guy, though. I wish I wasn't. Uh, wasn't fooled by well, the, I mean, the hijinks. If you, most ladies now are doing some of this stuff, so I like it when they go all out. I want it to look like uh. a fuck. <laughs> See, the worst part is you, the, <laughs> you jo Johnny. You like it? Oh yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> I mean, again, to a point, you're like, if you're 50 and you're like, hey, this will legitimately make me look younger. But the problem is, it's like a girl who's 28 and does this. You go, you look older. I don't think I like it on the 25 year olds. I think you got to be over 30. So yeah, because it, makes, doing, but it starts making me. you look older because you can just go, well, this is something old people do. So it, that's that's older. exactly true. Yes. Yeah, and you look old. You go, I don't know what your age is now. I probably dated three girls in a row with the lips. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty common now, though. <laughs> it's nuts. They go get fucking needles in their lips <laughs> like once a month. So, okay, these are the, the the couple articles. The CNN said, Biden's family, we already talked about this in yeah. the intro, but Biden's family encourages him to stay in the race to discuss whether top advisors should be fired. And that was obviously yeah. the funniest <laughs> one to me, just being like, someone did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, yeah, why didn't they inject him with more fucking adrenochrome? Can you imagine being the aide that just got fired? No, the aide's like looking around being like, what? <laughs> you, know, you know how bad it would have been if it was not for me? You fucked up, okay? Yeah, the aide, I mean, that's the classic, just like, Heads are gonna roll. It's not gonna be Biden's head. I mean, his head might fall off his body at some point. He's that old, but this isn't really coming from the publications. By the way, this is them like quoting the people. Yeah, they're inside sources. This is like the, the Biden camp being like, "Listen, we're we're as mad at any as yeah, anyone yeah, 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 as whoever weird. did this." <laughs> the New York Times said Pre President Biden's family is urging him to stay in the race and keep fighting despite last week's disastrous performance. Even as some members of his clan privately ex <laughs> they wouldn't have said clan before well, now no. some member of his clan privately expressed exasperation about how he was prepared for the event by his staff people close to the situation said so they're sort I mean, of he was prepared though like from all well they're big the big one that did make sense i mean again it doesn't matter this was the guy could barely speak but yeah. uh one of the things that they said was they gave him like uh number heavy answers to do yeah and they should have been like stay away from remembering anything okay but yeah <laughs> That's great. All well and good, but he's the president of the United States. He has arguably the hardest job in the world. That's what everybody says. You're like, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's like an they excuse. Should, it's not a good excuse to say we should. We told them we should have hired someone who would keep him away from having to remember any numbers. I mean, I don't know what he would have said otherwise. Like, he was trying to be like, because Trump was, the funny thing was. Where'd you watch it, by the way? I watched Were you it, in Hawaii? I was in Hawaii. I was literally like a 
where I, I watched it on Twitter actually. Some someone was like just li- a live, live stream streaming of it, and I was like listening in the car or whatever. But like they'd ask Trump a question, and he would never answer the question. Trump had the stuff he wanted to talk. They'd be like, "So what about like the space program?" Trump's like, "The wall is such a disaster. <laughs> yeah, the border." And they go, and they would keep just like, and then because they, they had like the three minutes, and then they would go ask Biden, and then you'd go back to Trump, and he goes, yeah, "So we were talking about the uh, space." And he goes, "The wall." Like he would just, yeah. He just had the things we he did wanted that to talk part about. Kind of a recap. Yeah, yeah, he just that's he talked about what he wanted. To talk about and people are going well it was a bad debate and he's like well the rules of this debate were such that i guess Trump that's what felt, i said it was Trump like felt forced what are you going to do though if they've asked you something about it before and then they give you your time you're like well i'm going to respond to that yeah, yeah i'm going to respond to that yeah exactly so News but, but biden wouldn't have done a better job if he had like no things to talk about like you go no they're saying it was number heavy yeah but that's the stuff he was like yeah you're trying to be like here are the things we've done here are the metrics that we use to quantify yeah and whoever said that should be fired (laughs) is i think what they're getting at you're out patel (laughs) or sing or whatever (laughs) yes and whoever did that (laughs) not gonna work here here anymore (laughs) newsweek brian my favorite they said several undecided latino voters say debate shifted them towards biden and this is why it's even funnier is it originally they changed the name and said uh, undecided vote uh, undecided Latino voters debate say the debate shifted them over to Biden but then they changed the headline after everyone so what happened was they found like four guys yeah they were running a stream there was like four Latino guys that there were running some, like some, some stream in Latino that were allegedly undecided that said afterwards their debate and they're like we found wh- a guy a guy yeah, well this guy go. this guy liked Biden Diego. Diego, like him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what a funny article. To it run. is crazy to be undecided and watch that. Because the thing is, Trump gave you exactly what you thought you were going to get. There were no curveballs for That's Trump. That's what you I go, said. Yeah, so why would you be like, I'm undecided? You go, well, Trump was Trump. You, the only, <laughs> what were you so, undecided by? Yeah. Well, what, well, they were, what, they, what switched you over? The answer is they weren't undecided. They weren't undecided. Yeah, they were just buying. I mean, I saw Frank, this guy Frank Luntz, who's just like this really famous pollster. That's like all he does is just a pollster. And he did some, he had like a giant Zoom meeting and essentially everyone was like, yeah, that was bad for Biden. Uh huh. Yeah. So, well, I don't know if you saw, speaking of them trying to get Kamala out there, and it did actually, uh, girl, <laughs> we in the streets. Have you, you seen, don't talk like that. Have you seen the video uh, where they did? Because uh, she says the same thing in every speech, and mm. she goes, "Oh, want to yeah. move forward and yeah, be yeah, unburdened yeah. by unburdened, the past." Yeah, and there was a supercut, and it was—I think it was like seventy-five times yeah, she yeah, said yeah. that. She goes, "Move to the future and be unburdened by the past." Mm-hmm. And they literally, the, she had said it so many times in this video that I was like, "That's crazy!" And it was like a third of the way done the video. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, hey. that's something else." That's her. Bit. But she, this one was something else, really. I'll play. She has, this. you know what it is? She has a warehouse full of merch with that on it. Unburden. <laughs> she goes. She goes. Fuck, man. Got to move merch. <laughs> Unbur. Move to the future. I don't remember the exact quote. Move to the future and be unburdened by the past. <laughs> She, it's like she's doing like she's like a comedian. She yeah. goes and does the same act every yeah, every has, night. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a dynamite or some shit. But it is <laughs> that's her dynamite. Killer bees. But I don't y'all think, better save up. <laughs> I don't think she's dropping it like she's saying it's a catchphrase though. I think she's slipping it in like it wasn't a catchphrase. I mean, surely for someone in that profile, you have to know that people are going to start kind of connecting the dots here and be like, you say this every time. <laughs> I, I guess not. I mean, I think one of the things that happened is so many of the speeches she's doing are like, you know, she's doing the, the you know, they're opening up a used car dealership in Delaware. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they yeah, got yeah. her out on the fringes, yeah, yeah, right? Around, but so, you think so she has her own speech. It's kind though. of like when a comedian's like, ah, this joke kind of sucks. Like, whatever, I'm going to say it in Ohio, but yeah, I, I, mean, I might not be doing this at the Comedy Cellar. I think she was saying all that, but they are still recording all these things and putting them out. But I think so little people were watching it. She was like, well, I can't waste the material right, by just good doing material. it. <laughs> she goes, it kills every time. She goes, I'm not retiring that bit just because I did it at the Delaware daycare center opening. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, you think she has a speechwriter, though. Like, Is there any shit on Delaware? No, Delaware's a great state. <laughs> I'm uh, in Delaware. Uh, but you, she has a speechwriter. She has someone who can crank out this stuff for her. Like, she doesn't have to do it. She has a teleprompter. Maybe the speechwriter realized she's so uh, out of it 
like you know what I mean she's so obsessed with uh, how she looks and trying to seem cool and mm. stuff like that she's like I can give this bitch the same speech and sure. she won't notice sure or she like, keeps slipping cheating. it in like he like, doesn't put it in like this she is a just, joke no she just keeps saying it regardless oh. <laughs> that was funny too after the Biden debate and they're like Biden will never do a press conference without or anything without a teleprompter again that was the big like people were like oh he should have never given him something to do without a teleprompter and then he had like a teleprompter two days later and he keeps reading the notes like, <laughs> like the notes to himself he, he's like literally Ron Burgundy like he says something and then he goes <laughs> say it again for emphasis <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> Well, I don't think they're floating. Kamala out there has been that uh, successful either. No. This is what they, this is. This is a video. No, no. So this is. Uh, I don't know if this is actually new though, but it's pretty new. Yeah, the Comedy Central one. Okay, the, with the Taraji P. Henson. I don't know who this girl is, but Taraji P. Henson. Who's that? I don't know. I know her. I, I mean, I know her. Her name. I don't know what she's from. She's an American actress from maybe one of those uh, BT shows. This thing's hard to watch though. <laughs> No, no, Taraji. Now, you know I wouldn't do that. Especially not to a fellow bison. The real H.U., you know. So what's on your mind? Oh, Madam VP Harris, I'm worried about the election. Women's reproductive rights are on the line. Our Supreme Court is on the line. Our basic freedoms are being tested. Madam VP, I know you've been traveling across the country. What Oh, this is at the BET Awards. Yeah, girl, uh, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they're not like us. They no, not like they us. not. There's a something else. It's crazy too because we know, out here in these streets. That was she did like the, you're, you're the opposite 20. of out here on these streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you also like incarcerated so many people for fucking <laughs> weed in California. Legitimately the opposite you're of like out here the on these worst streets. For that. <laughs> But also, like, she, they probably did 20 takes, and that was the best take. Yeah, but I think... Like, the, she's pretty stiff there. The codes... Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they definitely did a few of the takes that, of that. That wasn't a one take. No, this is tough. I don't know why the BET Awards, like, a, agrees to that. I guess they, they want Trump to lose or whatever. Yeah, whoever, yeah, I guess the writers of that or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, like, that's that's a pe that's a real piece of work right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But it is funny. She always gets hit for the code switching. But it's like, you know for a fact she doesn't speak like that. <laughs> Hell no. She definitely does not speak like that. It, girl! girl! Out here in the streets! <laughs> you know what they say. He not like us. He goes, hold on. Let me just get a bowl of chitlins. I'm hungry. And you're, you're eating chitlins? And you're just like, he not like us. Like, what does that mean? Like, people that are half black aren't black enough? <laughs> like, that's the per that is what that means. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Something else. And again, I've said this, but I get the code switching. When I turn in, when I go to Canada, I turn yeah. up a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get a campfire around me? <laughs> oh, yeah. You walk into like a beer store in northern Ontario, you're a different guy. <laughs> oh, can I just get a pack of 50? <laughs> you ever, can you get a 2 4 or 50? You ever, seen a, you ever seen a gay guy code switch? I uh, don't know. Well, like, uh, you never? So like, 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 go. Down no, normal to gay. Oh, normal to gay or gay to normal. Like they do do it. I don't know. I don't well, it's know. funny. I was saying it's funny because when you see gay guys being like, "Oh, you know what it is," and then they're like, "All right, so what do you want to do?" You're like, "Oh, so that's optional." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I was saying it kind of feels like a gay guy coming out of a trance. Uh -huh. Like he's like, <laughs> <laughs> when they, yeah, because they show up to work like the, you know the day uh -huh. before. They're like, "Oh my god!" And then they get to work and they're like, <clears throat> "So uh, the TBS report, yeah. like, who? I don't know what yeah. just happened back yeah, there." What I was just, that about? Like it was you, you were cursed by a gypsy to be gay and then you come out and you're like what the fuck you got come on you like <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what she she's doing that i i can't I imagine guess for the bet words but i, do, know that I can't be. imagine that this like works on a bunch of, on like black guys like i can't imagine black guys would be like oh shit i didn't realize oh, she's from the streets huh <laughs> shit still not voting but shit oh oh hell no i didn't realize <laughs> she was from the streets <laughs> if they think Drake's not black enough, like I don't think this is gonna cut it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Drake didn't cut it, then uh, by the way, she's like they not like us. It's like you're also half black. Yep. And probably like Drake. Drake's at least a rapper. You're mm -hmm. a politician. Yeah. Who incarcerated black people? <laughs> it's like, like a like impressive clip saying the Drake quote. It's like you're you're less quote unquote black than Drake. <laughs> yeah. like, the guy's a rapper. I mean, they're yeah. I mean, even on genetically, it's equal. Girlfriend, get ready for an election. We in the street. <laughs> she just came oh, out. That's cringe. <laughs> she started her, started her speech. She was like, 
Sheed. That will be all. Yep. <laughs> well, ah, oh, hell no. They, yeah. they mix up Joe's speech and Kamala's speech, and Joe comes out here like, ah, <laughs> oh, hell no. Oh, uh, I think that. Uh, girl. <laughs> they accidentally put hers on. What? This is, what? In the streets. <laughs> These streets are tough, man. They, they not like us, man. <laughs> Fellas, I got to tell you about Talkspace. It can be challenging to find and meet with a therapist that's the right fit. And there's lots of other things. People might not know where to start. You might not want to go in person. You might not. That might not fit into your day. So that's where Talkspace comes in. You also might think it'd be too costly to do normal therapy, but Talkspace is affordable and in network with most insurance providers. Talkspace is the leading virtual therapy provider makes getting the help you need easy, accessible, and affordable. Sometimes you might want to talk about something. You don't want to burden your friends. You might not want to burden the other people in your life. And you might need someone to talk to about something you're going through. So Talkspace Therapy and Psychiatry are covered by many insurance plans and employers. Most insurance members only pay a copay of $30 or less. You can easily sign up online and get paired with a licensed provider that's the right fit for your needs. Typically within 48 hours, you can also switch providers at no extra cost if that one's not doing it for you. Talkspace makes getting the help convenient because you can take appointments from the comfort of your own privacy in your home. And also, you can even talk it out between sessions by sending messages to your therapist. So they've solved therapy in a way that will probably work for you in a way that maybe traditional was not. So as a listener of this podcast, you're going to get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash BoysCast. The promo code you're going to enter is SPACE80, S-P-A-C-E-80 to match with a licensed therapist today. So you go to Talkspace.com slash BoysCast, enter the promo code SPACE80 to get $80 off your first month and also show support for the show. So that is Talkspace.com slash BoysCast with the promo code SPACE80. <laughs> there was a rapper, this guy, uh, BG, uh, BG Future, and uh, rapper BG's Future Songs. So BG is just the name, not BG okay. Future. Oh, his songs are about the <laughs> I future. thought it was the rapper Future like for a, a second. He's <laughs> no, the Just the article BG is the, the word futurist? Future. I fucked up, okay? I'm not like them. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like them. I mean, I don't know anything about this guy. I, so. ain't, I ain't black like Kamala, you're right? Not, you're not. Future uh, rapper BG, but it's, it was just this one headline that I'm just going to say, but he basically got out of jail and he was there for 10 years and he's like a rapper and then they essentially, as part of his conditions of release anytime he wants to release a rap song he has to send it to the government and they have to approve oh, it oh really <laughs> yeah dude it reminds me in canada they give you the grants but you have to get the government approved it and the government wasn't happy and i had to be on a group call with all these like old people i've told you about it but does he have to like send it to his parole office like what is specifically like i think there's a department glorify your previous crimes and stuff probably or? something like that you probably can't talk about like crimes but more so you can't like agitate future crimes right, right? like you probably can't be like i'm gonna come kill this guy yeah yeah, yeah. which is i guess well, maybe any of this stuff, you're like, whatever. But the problem with it is, who's in charge of it? I would guess and it's just his parole officer, probably. You think the parole officer? I don't think officer, there's a department of, like... There is in Canada. Yeah, there is in Canada. But I'm saying for him, I admit, like, I don't think there's, like, a department of, like, you know, uh, released hip-hop artists or whatever. I think you're wrong about that. And I, I don't know what I'm I talking about. I think it would just count as, like, you know, condition of your parole is, like, uttering threats or something. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't know uh, what I'm talking about. That would be my guess. It would just be... But I, I'm somewhere, like, some potentially, like, 65-year-old, like, white corrections officer. <laughs> you know I only I mean? say that because I know with Shkreli, like, Shkreli has all this stuff where, like, if he wants to do certain shit, he has to just, like, he always has to just run it by his parole officer. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so. But it is hilarious having, like, you know, some 65-year-old <laughs> dude has to, like, go through your rap lyrics. Yeah, you probably yeah. didn't even understand Yeah, them. probably. He goes, you sure say the N-word a lot. <laughs> Maybe they give him a black one, just so. <laughs> he comes in, he'd be like, honestly, I'd like to hear the N-word a little more. <laughs> Call them that again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you throw one in there for me, huh? Because he is that. Yeah, he goes, instead of calling him, um, you know, N-word so many times, what about something else? What about, like, a, a tur jive turkey or something? <laughs> You're referring to, you know, when this part where you called your ops the N-word, I'd like to see a hard R in there. <laughs> <laughs> Coolest PO ever. The uh, French feminists have been at it again. Ooh, you saw this one, right? With the mopping? 
what were they protesting this time? Was it global warming or just general feminism? Uh, it was some sort of feminism thing. And they go, yeah, you want us to mop topless? Is that your <laughs> utopia? Well, how about this? How about we get the hottest ones of us to mop topless? Is you that like what, that? Is that what it was? It was just like, it was kind of like an ironic, like this is what you want us to I do? I think so. So basically, obviously we can't show the video because there, I couldn't find a blurred one, but basically a bunch of topless women were mopping up like the French parliament. Anti-fascism protests. So they're probably, okay, protesting <laughs> fascism. Yeah. Wouldn't, so they're saying like, this is what fascists want us, topless Yeah, mopping. literally fascists. Oh, fascists yeah, no, don't want you know them topless. No, no, so, sorry. I do know what this is. So they had an election on uh, Sunday night in, in France. So their Prime Minister Macron stepped down. And then their far-right party, they have like basically two different elections. Like basically a one election and there's like a runoff election or something like this, which is coming up this Sunday. Marie Le Pen, who is the leader of like the far right, like we're deporting all the migrants, like far right essentially. And her dad was like a far right leader in France, very like controversial guy. She won the mm -hmm. first round, yeah. right? And so there was huge protests by all the people on the left who were like, we're about to go have like a far right <clears throat> government unless they can like do something on this. They have a week to basically like right the ship. So this was their protest. And they're sort of saying, like, you don't need this right wing guy. Look, we'll mop. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. They go, this is what your future is going to be. <laughs> okay, go, I got right, it now. Pretty sick. <laughs> pretty sick future. Just fucking topless chicks mopping. I don't know how, like, you know what it is? I was Friends thinking. Friends are insane. In, a, in, like, guy friend groups, it, it's like, the, or just, like, not even friend groups, like, work settings or whatever. It's always, like, a little... Um, more obvious like what the hierarchy is mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah in business partnerships whatever but in girls girls always have like one silent friend that like low-key runs everything that they're sure. all afraid of yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah the queen like, bee they always have one queen bee and you're not really sure who it is mm. like there's a group of friends and they're all just like where do you guys want to eat and they're all like really afraid of sure. like this one girl like you don't know what she's doing and that, that girl's like we're all feminists now and you're like that girl is like the meanest person in the world mm. which by the way i watched the ellen uh uh, the documentary on Ellen on the the Vice one, uh, yeah, and Kurt always calls it Mean Gate, yeah, <laughs> and it was always it is the funniest thing to be like she got canceled for being mean, right? And they have to do a whole thing like because they write they do the whole narrative, right? And then they have the way that they do it is like, and then people found out that she was mean, <laughs> and at first you're like it is kind of hilarious to be like you know canceled for being mean, sure. but then they cut to her like in a month before and she's getting an award for like nicest person, mm, like that's how it always <laughs> and gets it, you. it really was like she was like she was doing it to her like her whole obviously everyone knows her whole brand was being nice yeah but she was like you know accepting awards for how nice she was and stuff like that sure. and it is just so that, that's i mean that's why like rappers don't get me too they just get arrested like two of them get arrested for actual sex trafficking yeah and the rest of them get total passes for everything because they're like yeah we we never say we're not this. Yeah, I said I'm a pimp and all my yeah, songs. Yeah, I said I'm pimping all my songs or whatever. And like, I'm not literally a sex trafficker, but I do some fucking wild shit. But, yeah. you know, I never pretended like I'm some good guy. The Ellen one's so funny, though, because <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, <laughs> they they had all the talking heads talking about it, right? And they were t like a lot of them were like, you know, and the guy killed himself and stuff like this. But this one, they talked about it with like the same gravity mm. and the same music. But it's like, and then it turns out. She wasn't nice at all. <laughs> <laughs> she ended up just being a regular old boss, huh? I thought I was coming to work for someone cool and we were going to be dancing all the time. She made me write stuff and file stuff away and, and some get of the, stuff for her. Some of the things you're watching, it really is like not a big deal. Like one of the things, but you're like, if your brand is like, I'm the most nicest, compassionate yeah. person in the world, someone would be like, they were on the, they were a writer on the show and they wanted to take like a month off or like, they didn't even say the amount of time they wanted to take like a big leave for mental health. Sure. And then when she, they came back from their leave, they, Ellen had replaced their job as a writer. Uh -huh. It was like, that was like evidence Just of how mean totally she was. Normal. You're just like, you have literally like one of the top of the top jobs, probably getting paid Easy. like 10,000 bucks a day. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm just going to skedaddle for a couple of months and you come back and they replace you. Stuff, and it was like, that's how, that, that's how mean she was. And it's like, again, this is a job <laughs> where you're like, you're only working 30 weeks a year. Like, like you that's have on top of <laughs> four months off or like more. But yeah, on top, but it was one of those things where 
the so it's not a big deal to me but yes if you were parading around being like there is no one nice as me and for example she had all these things where you know she was like i'm gonna do the nicest thing in the world and i'm gonna like uh turn this kid into justin bieber mm-hmm. and then she was like she would basically come and be like do this do this do this and then the guy like didn't watch some documentary and he called and yelled at her mother and was like i'm not we fuck fuck you and blah blah, blah. Uh-huh. and you're done you're you'll never work in this business Alan again kind that? of thing this is oh, what okay. the you know sure. i'm i'm like i'm just yeah, kind of like extra yeah, paraphrasing yeah, yeah, yeah. extrapolating but like that was the gist of it where they were saying like she was going on these tours talking about how nice she was but then like behind closed doors she's yelling and screaming people's hair is blowing out back of the window okay. which obviously she was you know a hard ass that's a overachiever kind of like for sure but. And like again, like when you're in her position, like the pressure is not on her fucking third writer to deliver. The pressure's on her. Like if her show bombs, she can't be like, oh well, you know, the third writer like really fucking was went on fucked off and I know, left exactly. for a month, <laughs> yeah. and that's why it was bad. They're like, no, it's like you're the face of this thing. They it's- also have a lot of funny things too. And in this one, it's like in this one specifically because they they have to build the narrative, but the narrative is very much like you know. And she was like breaking ground with this show, no one had ever seen anything like. It. And you're like, girl Seinfeld. That was, the idea was girl Seinfeld. Yeah, it was yeah, for sure. You're like the only groundbreaking I guarantee you, part in was in the pitch. It was Girl Seinfeld. Yeah, the only <laughs> groundbreaking part was that she was gay. No, but she came out gay after eight seasons. Yeah, after eight seasons. And it was yeah, funny because yeah. they had some of the same arguments as before, where some people didn't like the show, and they were kind of like people are too homophobic. But it was like, yeah, but also it's like her, like if you were watching Seinfeld, which is about him dating and all this sort of stuff, and then all of a sudden Seinfeld turned gay and he was going on dates with guys, you're like, well, this is just a different show now. Yeah. yeah so it's sure. like it is hard to catch the magic in a bottle of a show, and if you just change the entire thing to a different show, it's like it doesn't always hit. Yeah. And you have but to also eight seasons, but you also lot. have a different audience too, yeah, right? You're just like, sure. so I guess obviously you're like, I can see why that didn't hit. With people might not be homophobic to be like, you made the number one character like in a completely different thing in the completely yeah. different show now, and just like whatever. It is funny though, like in hindsight, where like that was because I do remember that i remember specifically i think i was like in eighth grade and you remember like, jacking off and you go what? no but it was like this big bombshell where everybody's like ellen's gay and then but you're like yeah obviously yeah she's we already kind of knew that but you're really like but obviously she was gay no but i guess the bombshell was the they're gonna make was, like all the episodes about yeah, it. yeah yeah but the fact that she's gay but i think even the bombshell was that she is in personal life gay and, you, and then you look back and you're like yeah like she obviously was but yeah at the time people were like what well that was you at your wedding when you came up when they said do you have any words for the bride and you're supposed to read your things you go how about that mom what do you have to say <laughs> now about who's gay <laughs> <laughs> who's the gay one now mother you <laughs> exhibit A. Exhibit A. <laughs> Who's the gay one now? Come talk to me tomorrow after the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who's gay, mother, <laughs> mother. And I do a spin down the. <laughs> You're like you do have to give the bride, and you go. <sighs> <laughs> uh, who's the gay one now, <laughs> mother? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, this French are the French are fucking incredible. What a, what a protest! Uh, I don't like. Do you think left wing chicks who are like undecided or maybe like people who don't vote or go? Yeah, definitely got to go vote for. <laughs> I don't think it's making much of a dent in anything. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a social club right now. Yeah, it is impressive though. I will say that how the French feminists are all kind of hot. They all have armpit hair, but they're like... These ones are not fat, you're right. Yeah, whereas like you see that here and you'd be like, it literally looks like the fucking sumo wrestlers we saw a few weeks ago. Like, I mean, if, they're, paraded out. <laughs> if they were doing them now, they'd be mobbing the floor and they'd have to come and bring in cement to refill in the <laughs> footprints. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. I'm doing more damage than your yeah, fucking like, health. It'd be like carved out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what else is just on the topic of rappers? One thing that always makes me laugh is, um, and I was kind of noticing it when we were in Hawaii, but it's like... Because, okay, so, you know, in the 70s, uh, like, you know, rock and roll was kind of the predominant music, right? Mm. Kind of, you know, the Led Zeppelins, and that became, like, that was, like, the music, where, like, a very pivotal moment for, like, American music, right? And then, so all those people kind of grew old, and they became kind of like the bikers. Yeah. And, and but everyone sort of looks at that guy like, oh, that's an old guy, you know, a guy wearing like a Led Zeppelin shirt. Sure, yeah. Rap music kind of had the same thing, where all the you know rap music was like the famous music, and that was like the big reaction. And then all those guys now are like fifty, a lot of them, right? Yeah. And they 
but they haven't accepted that they're the old guy in the biker jacket at the Legion Hall. Right, yeah. Like the old heads, I feel like black old heads, you know, wearing the jumpsuits and all this stuff, kind of like guys that but would the dress like Ari Spears, they don't, you know? Yeah, but they don't look as ridiculous. Like uh, there is a thing where like a, a 65 year old black man. I don't think a biker like a, looks ridiculous. I Well, maybe not ridiculous, but like. See what I'm saying? But like, yeah, there's something about like, if, if there's like some dude who's like, you know, like DJ Vlad or something, that guy. And you're like, if he dresses like a 65 year old in a full suit, you're like, he looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, but if he had a Led Zeppelin shirt on, I and, guess just the shirt but and like a like, you know ripped jeans, he doesn't look that crazy. Yeah, but I guess that's more common because y- young people will wear that. But like, there is something where it's like a sixty. But it seems like an old guy outfit. Yeah, yeah when yeah, you yeah. see a guy with the Harley Davidson gear or whatever, you like, oh, that's an older guy. Yeah, right? that's an older guy. Yeah, and then, Harley Davidson shirt. For but sure. I just think it's it's like uh, it hasn't been like accepted yet that like that's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's true. That's they, can, they can pull it off a little better though yeah, but, well, I'll give you that but that also might be because it's newer mm. yeah maybe you know what I mean it That's hasn't true. quite set in yet but I, I get your point where black I mean, guys I personally look a little look, younger into their 50s the thing is they pull it off I do think they look ridiculous but they're like in their whatever circle they pull it off whereas I think I think if you're like a 15 year old black guy maybe they do see like a Ari Spears type and they're yeah. like that's an old guy that's an old guy yeah for sure. But you're right. I, I don't full really know. We're, we're kind of matching, in between. Full jumpsuit, matching backwards hat. Like. This is a question for 20 year olds. We're the in between right true. now, but That's true. it is an interesting thing that it is sort of like ha- the same thing sort of happened the other yeah. way. You know I guess I mean? the question would be like, what does a 65 year old wearing like a shiesty mask look like? <laughs> homeless. Like, is that ridiculous? You go, what? The fuck? I think you look homeless. Homeless, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I think that's exactly what you look like. I will say a uh, little quick not recommendation or not recommend recommendation or not recommendation. I'm not saying either. It's yeah. uh, down the middle. I saw the movie Bike Riders, worst name for a movie of all time, but uh, it looked pretty good. Bike Riders, it's uh, Tom Hardy, the guy who played Elvis. The Bike Riders. Yes. And I thought it was going to be a really good movie. It was really looked up my alley. However... It was a little bit like a biker movie. There was it was kind of like an action movie for guys, like for Sons girls. Of kind of. I thought it was going to be more of that, but it was kind of. It was like a documentary, and the main character nothing really happens. So kind of, uh, there's. I felt like it was like really cool. Okay. Like the imagery is really cool. It's all the bikes, but after forty minutes, you're kind of like, what? What is this? What's going on? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's really happening. And then the main character kind of souped up like he was going to be like a big deal, and then he just kind of like he takes off when going gets tough, and you kind of like. It, it was like an. It felt to me like I was watching like episode one and one and one and one and a half of like a series. Right, and then it just ends. That's how I felt. Okay, and it was also like all the bikers are like really good looking and all this sort of stuff. And it was a little the way it shook down was kind of like the ending maybe girls would want as opposed to guys. So I just felt like a little bit. It was like a movie that was like four guys, four girls. <laughs> Didn't love it. Right. Didn't didn't love it. Not didn't hate it. it. Not gonna watch it. I wouldn't say don't watch it. I'm not saying don't watch it. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Okay. I, th- I think the reason that the only negative part, if I just walked into this cold, I'd be like, I was pretty cool. I think the way it was pitched, it was like, oh, sick. Oh, uh, okay. Like when I saw the trailer, you're like, sick. Oh, the trailer makes it look, and then the trailer had all the badass parts, and that was it. What? Yeah, you can only take a movie so far on just having like badass imagery right. and fights and stuff like that. Okay. It was still cool. It right. was like, yeah, but I just didn't, it didn't blow me away the way that I was expecting. I was expecting to walk out of there being like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the first time. <laughs> I'm joining a bike gang. <laughs> I'm a biker now. <laughs> well, this is the first I've heard of it. So, <laughs> you know, okay. This is, uh, tell me what you think of this. 15 simple but surprising romantic ideas. Men go crazy for. Oh, just 15? Yes. Yeah, so we'll go through some, and you can tell me, and <laughs> I can tell you okay. whether this is something you'd go fucking crazy for. Okay. You know what I was also thinking? Whenever uh, you're dating a girl, mm-hmm. girls love lists so much yeah. that whenever they give you things they're mad about, they always have to give you in a list. So uh-huh. they're like, you know, well, there's some things that I've been meaning to say sure. that I'm not happy about. Yeah. And Always, there's a big drop off after from one to two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, one's the well. It's a good negotiating tactic. <laughs> I think that's they what go because they go. Here's ten things I'm mad about, but I'm cool if you just address number one. <laughs> Right, and number one's just like the main one. And then I think it's, it also softens the can't be like, they don't have to take accountability for the one thing. There's like, there's this collection of things. Sure. But it's always like the first one's, you know, I'm not happy that you skipped my mom's funeral. Right. Yeah. And then I'm also <laughs> not happy that you left the microwave open. <laughs> like, there's always an enormous <laughs> drop off. You go, look, okay, fine, I'll close the microwave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Number one is you you wouldn't come with me on my trip and I had to go alone and you canceled on me night for last minute. Number two is you put the mail on the freezer where I couldn't reach it. <laughs> 
Hey, I mean, that's something, uh, I guess, take from that. Kind of a smart strategy. I think it might be. Like, you're like, oh, I don't know. You have a yeah, bunch of stuff. Yeah. I okay, like, fine. I'll go on the trip with you next time. <laughs> no, no, you go fine. I'll stop doing the counter. Oh, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or it's like <laughs> one can't be fixed, but then here's nine things that are actually actionable, and then you get all those. Yeah, that's another one, yeah. Right. But there she's like, I, you didn't address all that stuff. You go, I closed the microwave. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. 50% of the things. <laughs> <laughs> So these are these are just funny because it's like a girl writing stuff guys go crazy for that they yeah. definitely would not go crazy Nothing. for. Yeah, this is just how little women know about men. They start off kind of strong. They go create a coupon book, write things out, which you know that's a girl trying to get Danny's heart yeah, for sure. You would go crazy. <laughs> that's you in bed. She walks in, fifteen percent off Arby's. <laughs> 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 this is two for one. <laughs> two, two can dine for nine ninety nine. Ah, uh, well, that sounds pretty good to me. Actually, now I'm gonna have sex. I'm already done. I'm already done. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because chicks are like, oh, men go crazy for this. But you're like, if you go, if a guy reads this, it goes, oh, I know what chicks love coupons. <laughs> you go the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that. <laughs> Try give your chick a fucking list of a bunch of coupons. <laughs> but they then they actually weren't talking about those kind of coupons. They say, write out things you're happy to give to your spouse and put them in an envelope, notebook, or small box. They can redeem them for when they wish for later. And what they this mean is literally is what a five year old <laughs> gives their dad for their birthday. You go one coupon for a car wash. Good for one car wash not valid on the weekends you go you can only really wash it on the weekends so it's not valid on the weekends. you know it would be okay if they give you a coupon for a moment of an hour of silence oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine that right. you just fucking <laughs> ding <laughs> yeah yeah hour of silence coupon yeah. try to be like fucking catch me if you can reprinting tons of those she goes <laughs> you're, you're like you've turned in yours like, i got a fucking danny box turns on. into the federal reserve <laughs> <laughs> no i turned into like the greatest counterfeiter on earth she goes i gave you two of these you've given me 10 back you go like, i don't know you see Danny's just in his study <laughs> with the jeweler's loop looking at fucking counterfeit coupons. I can't remember what the movie was, but there's like a count Willem Dafoe, this movie from the 90s where he's this crazy counterfeiter in LA and he's like, it's got it sounds like a good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. And he's like in this room and he's got like hundred dollars hanging bills, up. All hanging up. That. That's me with the coupons. <laughs> For silence, for an hour of silence, I'm just fucking jewel. If you can find the flaw in the notary, yeah, I, go, I don't know. I guess I don't know. <laughs> so that's number one. Yeah, I don't know if you had any funny ones, but I wrote down a few of my favorite. Uh, th uh, th number three is read to them. <laughs> Put on the outfit that turns them on, and it doesn't matter what you read, provocative literature or a technical manual. The words and the voice will provide a lure. <laughs> <laughs> None of these are just leave them alone. A technical he goes, manual. here's here's a coupon for you to go play video games for three hours without me bothering you. They don't think of that. Doesn't matter. Here's here's here's, here's a coupon for you can just watch the game without me bugging you for something. <laughs> well, that's not what she's doing. She's so, also, number two is get in the shower with them. Go surprise them by getting in the shower with them, which is like unless you have a giant shower. It's like it sucks. You're like, <laughs> you're like, okay, now I'm standing freezing in the cold right now. Because I don't mind the shower bone though, personally. The shower bone, but it's more. It's not even. No, I don't know. It's a low pressure bone. Yeah, I don't. Like the shower, <laughs> bone. shower bone's always a low pressure bone. I don't love the shower bone. Uh, but you're basically what happens is she put on an outfit that you like, which is a straight jacket with tape on the mouth. Yeah. And then, no, she comes in and then she reads you "Extreme Ownership" by Jocko Willings. <laughs> <laughs> 12 rules by Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> so technical manual is funny though. Yeah, yeah. Read him a technical manual. <laughs> okay. Number four is read the pages from their favorite romance novel <laughs> from the guy. What guy has a favorite? From romance. the guy's favorite romance novel and use your sexiest FM radio announcer voice. <laughs> a chick trying to do the fake radio voice. He opened the door. <laughs> she, she was quivering. But she's doing a guy's voice. She's. I guess. What's a yeah? You, that is a guy's that voice. That is a guy's voice. Right. Do your sexiest radio voice, and then read his favorite romance novel. Okay. You got a. You don't have a favorite. What? Oh, you don't have a favorite romance novel? No. No. no <laughs> I you got I, me. I don't think I've ever read a romance novel. Surprise picnic. Like I don't. Know. What surprise picnic? That's one of the number nine. Take them on a surprise oh, picnic. I'm I'm good on a surprise picnic. I don't want a surprise picnic. Can we just go to a? And it says like you can even patio? do the picnic in your backyard. Great. Well, the, the, by number four, they're already at things they want. Yeah, it's all just things read them. Like. Read them. I mean, number ten novel. is the ultimate thing that no <laughs> guys make oh. a path with something, <laughs> like make a path of rose petals. You're like that's things guys do for women. 
a guy like I used to do a joke about it, but it's like if a chick makes a path for fucking of uh, rose petals, you show up, you go, who the fuck's cleaning up all these rose petals? Like, all right, well, <laughs> yeah. let's clean this shit up. I also, guess. you'd show up and you go, has a guy has been has there been a guy here? <laughs> Yeah, like, who are you fucking? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> Although, that would be okay if your chick with you uh, did that, uh, the path with quarters, and you had no choice but yeah. to follow it. Uh, <laughs> uh. You would, though, if it was food, though, because it says you could do candy gold coins. Candy gold coins, and then it says... You're the- walking in, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> ah, I'm not... <laughs> and then it just says to be waiting at the end of the path is their favorite cold beverage. <laughs> She's like <laughs> one picking beer, up, picking up all these coins, and there's just like a room <laughs> temperature beer. beer waiting for you. Yeah, <laughs> this is the most awkward shit, though. If, I hope no girl takes this advice and is actually uh, doing this, and some guy has to walk home and pick up rose petals to the ends to a Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Read to them in the announcer voice was just really doing it for me. <laughs> he opened the door. Okay, yeah, sit down. I've got something really sexy for you. She was looking into his eyes. Like, what's the announcer voice? And he kn- and he's off because he's... T- oh, that's Literally the announcer like, voice. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> she looked into his eyes and she could just tell that he was the one. <laughs> that's, your, that's your girl. You're on the bed and she's doing that. Yeah, Shh, I'm being like trying to watch right the game. Just, I'm being sexy right now. <laughs> Just like, She's you, reading. Have to, you have to like mute the TV to like just like listen to this. And this is a reading of Fifty Shades of Grey for you. So the man is walking into the house and he just grabbed her and she was loving it and she didn't want to. Oh, at first she felt a bit reserved by it, but she basically settled into it and looked into his eyes and she saw the future, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you're like looking at your watch. <laughs> She's awesome. doing this in a sexy outfit. <laughs> <laughs> you the favorite outfit that turns you on an umpire outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Write a love poem or a poem on a piece of paper, then cut it up into a puzzle like pieces. Oh my god. This is like these are like punishments. <laughs> like this is borderline. Like, did I do something? This is a serial you, killer. Yeah, does. Like, are you mad at me that I gotta do this right now? What did I do? <laughs> she writes you a poem and then cuts it up into a piece, and you have to go to scavenge your hunt so you can finally put your pu- fucking acrostic poem back together. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> what about take a bus ride? <laughs> take, Number well, fourteen, take well, a bus <laughs> ride. Take a train or bus ride, and then pretend to be strangers who meet for the first time. <laughs> no, what you have to do this. Yeah, you're is, like, this is the ultimate every yeah, comic. You're that not has allowed a to pick up women on the bus anymore. I don't know if you know what's going on. <laughs> That's what you say. You can, like, literally have someone intervening on your behalf. You go, hey, I'm Danny, and then some fucking pink-haired fat chick walks over. and goes, yo, we're not fucking doing this. And you go, no, we, we're just trying to spice things up. We actually know each other. We're <laughs> hey, you leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get she kicked. said no. Okay, <laughs> you get the shit kicked out here. <laughs> Some dude in a dress on the fucking <laughs> L train. You're like, she's like, hey, stop, leave me alone. And you're like, no, I want you to come back with me. And someone yeah, yeah, just yeah, knocks yeah. you out of the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you get pepper sprayed by some random chick. Yeah, some chick just got, you're right. It no, or you're like, dude, you're like literally on fucking a TikTok that someone took it. Like, this creep wouldn't leave this woman alone. This is what we have to deal with. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking 10 million views on TikTok. <laughs> Uh, this piece of shit wouldn't leave this woman alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting fired from your job. Yeah, yeah. Just because someone's on the bus doesn't mean you can approach them. Okay, she just has to take the bus. Somewhere. He literally said he won't take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to make her his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said the things he's going to do to her when yeah. she gets her home. <laughs> that is funny. She doesn't. You go. You're like, oh hey, what's up? My name's Ryan. And she goes, uh, yeah, I'm just on my way to yeah. work. <laughs> And then you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, uh, I'm just trying to listen to a podcast. Like, could you not? <laughs> you're really fucking me over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work in today's no. day and age. Uh, what is a fart walk? This is... Uh, uh, <laughs> this now is a- we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, a little something for me. <laughs> <laughs> the New York Post said that there is a big trend these days. Marilyn Smith, the Toronto, oh, Toronto based there from the go. six cookbook author and self-proclaimed queen of fiber. So there's this girl that's queen very, of fiber, very fart related content claims a post meal fart walk could be the solution for your digestive issues. And she suggests that an hour after mealtime, couples go for a fart walk together. 
Well, so there is a is real thing. Alley? There is a real thing. I don't get the fart element of it, but there is a real thing. <laughs> the Japanese, actually, I can't remember what it's called, but they have like, uh, it's called like a hundred steps or something or a thousand, I think a thousand steps where like after a meal, you like, you go walking. Like it's like a thing. I got the standing uh, treadmill at my oh, you got the standing, but, but specifically after you eat a meal and I do actually try and do this. It's like, it makes you feel better. If you go eat, especially if you eat a big meal, like just go walk for 10 minutes. Like you legitimately do feel better. I don't know about the farting part though. I th- <laughs> I don't get like what you just rip an ass with your birth like you could just go walk it's like the point of this digestion thing like in like you know even dr mike who we had on he's like yeah it's good to walk after a meal for a digestion but you don't have to just rip ass the whole time <laughs> i don't get that part but I yeah, it is good for you to I, yeah i do this ate. i do actually do this sure. i go for walks after meals but like you're going on a fart walk <laughs> i guess i am now <laughs> i didn't know i was you go on a romantic fart walk after the thing what is so gross man this is the thing where it's like the girls doing stuff the guys do like i don't know if a guy could get away with being like if i take my girl on a fart walk without everyone being like you're a pig yeah disgusting i mean the chick's like so what I, she goes i don't have to fart he goes you fart we're on a <laughs> fart walk okay you're fucking embarrassing me right now okay we're, we're doing a fart walk <laughs> no, what the fuck you doing, dude? You know the mukbang videos on TikTok where there's all these like fat chicks, and yeah. then basically um, uh, they just eat as much food as they can. Uh-huh. And the fe- uh, like, we actually covered in our thing the feeder community, yeah, like yeah. in all the videos and the gains and stuff like that. There's a- there's kind of a few more. I didn't uh, take them specifically because we already talked about this. But there's ones where it's like the guys are lit- literally like, yeah, we're trying to kill them. Basically, yeah. like they want you to eat so much that you die. Oh, like they're like four chan trolls. No, that's like what gets them off. Like, dude, dude it's kind of crazy. There's this whole thing what, on. What part gets them off though? Like them getting fatter, or them, or, or like knowing that you're slowly killing them. I think both. Maybe. Like, like are you? Really- I think it's guy to guy, but I think they just want them to get so fat. But it's like, dude, you literally have these girls doing mukbangs, and there's a bunch of dudes like just like paying to kill them essentially yeah it's almost like as if you would see in like a horror movie where you put a girl there and you're like forcing her to eat so much it's literally the gluttony in seven it's gluttony in seven and they've created they've essentially created the gluttony from seven situation on tiktok where they just pay these girls so much money to eat all this food so they die and then on top of that there's like a social component where they don't stop eat if they don't stop if they stop eating yeah their audience is gonna yeah you're like we're here to watch you eat to like stop try and pivot from this and it's just one of those things where you kind of think about like back in the day even last growing up without the internet like you would think of this would be like what people would make as like a dystopian thing yeah for and sure. sometimes you forget to be like we are there yeah where all these dystopian things are happening and they kind of just graze by yeah, you yeah, yeah we're like you have a bunch of women that have like their living is made off of uh f- people paying them to eat so much that they die that is yeah <laughs> i mean i never thought about it that way but yeah pretty uh it's like dystopian and you they know do I mean? die that's the thing too it's like we've i mean blair white did the thing where it's like yeah they they, they all die you, they all die yeah. They don't all die, but they are dying. They mostly die. Yeah, they most, I mean, eventually. <laughs> on a long enough time frame, they are dying, for sure. Well, we have a whole bunch more stuff to talk about. Patreon.com slash the boys cast, which actually has been growing. So we appreciate everyone that's over there. We, and if you haven't been over to the Patreon yet, we have two full episodes of me and Danny's TV show, Bug uh-huh. Man Bug And Man. I've been training for Miss New York. I got a nice... Uh, <laughs> no, we're doing guns. I know, but for 10K, I've been training. I, are you doing a 10K? No, for... What am I hit, missing here? When we hit... Boys cast oh. 10k on Patreon. Oh, I, I mean, go I got a dress and everything, man. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm going to wear the wife's wedding dress. <laughs> We're going to both apply for Miss New York at 10k. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Also, one other thing is when people send me articles on Patreon and the messages, that's a big help. And a lot of time yeah. we go through a lot of those articles that people Fuck send yeah. us. Um, Actually, one thing I should mention is a lot of the people from Patreon sent this, but I figured I'd talk about it after. But it was one of the funniest things I meant to mention earlier that that show uh, Amsterdam uh, basically. Oh, the with the racism <laughs> where they're like, yeah, yeah, that was like the yeah, that was from uh, that New Amsterdam. That New Amsterdam has this sh- uh, show, and people took this clip, but the clip is the doctor saying the kid got a tumor, a tumor from, from racism. racism, and then people took it and put a laugh track behind yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that, and it was like that is the peak where the doctor with a straight face goes you got a tumor from racism yeah, i imagine that would have been if i could guess t- the time of that <laughs> 2020 the day after george that Floyd was died. like yeah that was like <laughs> that was the season after george Floyd would have been in the summer season starts in september that would have been like some time day one yeah sometime late 2020 100 percent. but what a good clip yes racism all right thank you everyone also if, uh last time i'll mention this my fellas university shirts at uh ryanlongstore.com all right peace everybody later